Dear Zainab, I am sure that this slightly lengthy letter would surprise you. Don't worry about my health. There is an abundance of scrumptious delicacies to spoil me silly. Prakash has been wheeling us through the busy landscape for Orissa. Sometimes a few roads get beyond the reach of concrete. And Vivek, my friend, philosopher, tour guide and historian, with his garrison of words, has been keeping me preoccupied with more than what I came to explore. I really can't remember when a trip to study human behavior turned into that of leisure. I stopped to breathe in the moist air that hung loose over the mountains flanked by little hamlets, witnessed the mist cast a veil over the virgin waterfall. Paced through jungles that silenced civilization, the roads kept extending. They ran through lush fields of paddy, climbed up on mountain slopes and stumbled upon rustic tracks. They took me to places where beauty surpassed human imagination. Anthropology brought me to Orissa, but the visit unraveled more than the lineage of human beings. I cast away my ignorance of the other species to jot down a few points on the saltwater crocodiles of Pithirkanika the behavior of the migrating birds at Chilika, the antics of the nimble-footed deer, and the gigantic Asiatic elephants of Simlipal, species other than human beings that have coexisted with nature for ages. It was amazing to discover the origin of human beings in the form of the tribes in Orissa. The first tribe that I got introduced to were the Khans. Characterized by a distinct tattoo on their face, this fierce race thrives by cultivating rice and fruits on the slopes of the Eastern Ghats. Vivek says, that cons used to indulge in human sacrifice, but civilization forced them to mend their ways. I ventured into the thick jungles of southern Orissa to meet the Austro-Asiatic Bondos with a queer resemblance to the tribes in Africa and the Gadabas with their distinctive Mongol looks. My inquisitiveness took me to the bustling tribal markets at the foothills of the mountains. Tribes of every size and order descend to these markets to trade in the age-old barter system exchanging their produce for cattle, chicken and dried fish. But what amazed me most was the intricate craftsmanship of these primitive people. After a good two weeks of study and stay at the tree house resort on the mountains, Vivek treated me to some tribal dance and music.
This experience was ably accentuated by a few swigs of shalab, the palm liquor produced by these tribals. As if the scenic intoxication was not enough. There is a strange character to Orissa. One part of it is primitive, while the other has stood the test of time and civilization. I mean, a place that has a 4,000 year old history has got to be more than just captivating. I packed my thick research notebooks in my bag and gave in to the leisure of the romantic landscape. On our way, we stop to admire the relaxing sights of hot springs and the gigantic lagoon called Chilica, a natural marvel that occupies around 1100 square kilometers of land and houses several species of migrating birds and dolphins. The locals believe that it is protected by the ancient Kalijai temple that keeps a close eye on the lagoon. We traveled along the rich coastline of Urissa and stopped at Puri to admire the ancient architecture of the Jagannath temple. It is here that I witnessed Hindu worshipping and an ancient chronology of priests. It was at the Konak temple where time stood still in the form of art. This gigantic temple dedicated to the sun god is constructed in the form of a huge chariot escorted by seven steeds. There was one temple after another. They simply wouldn't end. The Mukteshwara and the Siddheshwara temples boasted of its refined architecture while a small but lavishly carved temple called the Rajarani temple stood still to prove a historical point. Religion, however, has left its mark in more than just one way by finding manifestation in almost every form available. The journey took me to Udaigiri and Khandagiri caves of the 1st century BC, where Jainism has left a curious imprint and moved on to the Buddhist stupas of Ratnagiri, Udaigiri and Lalitgiri. It was curious to observe the change of faith and belief over centuries. As I reflect on this vibrant journey, I find myself enriched and satiated. What I am taking back in return is more than I could have ever asked for. Right now, I am cooling my heels at the shores of this wonderful coastal state strolling through beaches, observing fishermen and admiring the peculiar artistry of exorbitant colors. How I wish I could have brought you here with me. A wholesome journey like this deserves to be shared. But I guess you'll have to wait till I return with the memories of a place where history is etched on a vivid landscape. Love. Rohan. I'm not going to be
dari Manedo.